Hey guys, it's Rain Blood back again with another video. Here to do my review for WWE Money in the Bank 2017. Now guys, this pay-per-view was pretty good. You know, in terms of match quality that is. In terms of booking decisions, it was horrendous. Alright, it was terrible in terms of booking. You know, for pretty much the whole show, except maybe one or two matches or whatever. But you know, here I am to review Money Bank 2017. I'll be addressing the problems I thought I had with it, and and of course the positives as well because I gotta do the positives as well. Showing off the air about an hour ago, and yeah. So of course I'm gonna start off with the pre-show match. The hype bros and uh fuck what's his name mojo Rawley and zack Ryder making his return from injury versus the colognes this is actually a decent tag match um i did kind of like it there was one part in particular that i liked when um one of the colognes was um chopping the crap out of mojo Rawley, but um mojo roll was pretty much going hulk hogan on him and just <laughs> resisting all the chops basically you know that was cool and the ending came um with the uh it was like a rough rider and a combination of whatever mojo Rawley's finisher was forgot what it was called but um i think maybe it was the hype rider something like that but anyway tag team finisher that's how they got the win good for them now the show officially starts and we kick off with the Money in the Bank ladder match for a WWE SmackDown Women's Championship match contract. Charlotte Flair defending against Becky Lynch, defending against Tamina. Oh, not defending against. Sorry, I'll, I'll start again. Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch versus Tamina versus Natalia versus Carmella. Uh, this match was a lot shorter than I, I hoped. Honestly, it was pretty good. They used the ladder a bunch of times in this match, which was awesome. There was this really funny part when uh, Becky Lynch and Natalia were each holding bits of the ladder. Like, Becky Lynch was holding one end, Natalia the other. And they were trying to get it out of each other's hands. And I think they uh, smashed Tamina with it. So, whatever. Uh, Charlotte Flair, she did a moonsault off the top uh, turnbuckle onto the outside onto... Uh, Onto Tamina and Natalia, which was awesome, and you know that's pretty much um, all the awesome stuff they have in this match. I'm just gonna skip to the ending now. I I was very happy that Kamala Kamala won. Um, she was actually my second choice. I actually predicted Charlotte to win, but uh, I hate how Kamala won. All right, I was happy that she did win, but here's how she won. She screwed Becky Lynch, or oh, not she, but James Ellsworth screwed Becky Lynch. Then James Ellsworth climbed up the thing, unhooked the money in the bank, and then threw it down to Carmella, and that's how Carmella won the women's money in the bank. That was a stupid ending, and that's the first of many sh sh shitty booking decisions, if you ask me, on this pay-per-view. But overall, it was still a really awesome, uh, solid match. I would have loved it if it was a bit longer, like maybe 10 minutes longer, something like that, but yeah. Then we have the next match, the uh, WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, the USO's to being his New Day. This match was really fun, really electric, it was like a minute shorter than the opening match, but um, it was still really good. The New Day though, they had the freaking match won, alright, the USO's were being pussies and they just let themselves get counted out so the new day wins only by count out that pissed me off i feel like it pissed probably a lot of people off but um you know wwe can be idiots sometime and they just have two shitty booking decisions in a row you know i hate that but it was still a really awesome uh, fun match for what it was so yeah i wish the new day had won the titles uh, I predicted the New Day to win the match, but they didn't win the titles, so whatever. Anyway, 
Next match, uh, the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship match, Naomi defeating against Lana, making her in-ring debut um, on the cameras, you know, because she has wrestled at, like, house shows. Oh, this, oh, wait, no, no, she was at WrestleMania 32, <laughs> yeah, in a, in a tag match, yeah, whatever. But, yeah, that was, that was cool, I guess. And, um, Naomi vs. Lana was what it was. It was fine, you know. Uh, Lana did some good moves, like working on, um, Naomi's leg when she realized that was an advantage. That was, that was good. Um, and, uh, it was, she was pretty sloppy, but, you know, she, she doesn't, she hasn't wrestled too much, so, you know, I feel like she deserves a pass for that. Um, but, um, Carmella, her music hit in the middle of the match. It looked like she was she might have cashed in Seth Rollins style like he did at WrestleMania 31. It was gonna turn into a triple threat match, but no, she she was just teasing us. But anyway, Naomi retained the championship, making Lana submit. So yeah, um, whatever match it was fine. You know, I think no, nothing to be mad about or anything. But yeah. Then we have the next match, the WWE Championship match, Jinder Mahal defeating against Randy Orton. Uh, this match was um, way better than I expected. I thought this was actually going to be worse than their uh, Backlash match. I'll say this, it was actually way better than their Backlash match. Seriously. This match really surprised me. Um, most of the time it was Jinder uh, actually trying to beat Randy Orton on his own, which was awesome. I loved that. Um... Like, Jinder was countering, Jinder countered the RKO, um, well, he didn't counter it, but he, uh, but he, uh, avoided the RKO at the, near the beginning, and, um, you know, uh, just a lot of good stuff, I really enjoyed the atmosphere in this match, you know, it made it feel like a big match, you know, which I thought was awesome, but, um, you know, at the end, we had a little repeat of, uh, backlash we had the legends um uh at uh at ringside we had rick flair we had bob orton uh sergeant slaughter i think and um maybe someone else but i can't remember right now and uh they were like booing gender like they were trying to get him to like they were trying to put him off a little bit well, the Singh brothers, you know, Jinder's, uh, manager brothers, you know, really, um, um, and, um, it worked a little bit, because the Singh brothers, they were kicked out, and, um, but then they were, um, because they noticed, uh, they were trying to interfere with, uh, for, uh, on Jinder's behalf, um, they put Jinder's, uh, foot on the, the rope, after he was hit with an RKO, um, and then the ref kicked them out, and then, um, the Legends were throwing shade at them, then the Singh Brothers attacked the Legends, which I thought was actually pretty cool, by the way, and then Randy Orton, um, attacked, uh, the Singh Brothers, just like at the end of Backlash, and, uh, that was cool, um, but I think I feel like he did even worse damage this time. He did an RKO onto one of the Singh brothers onto a table, which was and the table broke, which was awesome. Um, but um, Jinder Mahal, Orton gets back in the ring. Jinder Mahal does the Colossus, I believe that's what it's called, onto Randy Orton. Pins him one, two, three. Jinder Mahal retains, as I predicted. And I got to tell you something, guys. I actually wanted Jinder Mahal to win. And I know I was tearing Jinder apart in my uh, Backlash review. But here is why I wanted him to win here. SummerSlam, which is only in like two months from now. Trust me, he is facing John Cena for the WWE Championship. And I want him to keep the title until SummerSlam. Because when he faces John Cena... That's going to be an epic good versus evil type match, in my opinion. I mean, the match itself might not be, like, an amazing match or anything. But 
the good versus evil atmosphere is there, and that will really help the match, in my opinion. And um, I can't wait for that. That's why I want Jinder, wanted Jinder to win here, and I want him to retain just one more time at Battleground next month. Um, so yeah. Anyway, the match was actually really good. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, uh, way better than I expected. Solid match, I'd say. Probably the, uh, maybe the second best match of the night. I don't know. Either that or the, uh, women's money in the bank. But, yeah. That was really good. Um, so, yeah. And, um, there was something uh, that happened, uh, before this match and after this match, the Women's Championship match that I actually forgot to mention. But uh, if you guys, if you guys know your indie wrestling companies, you know Mike Bennett and Maria Canellis from ROH, I believe. They made their debut at the Money in the Bank pay view. That was so awesome. They came out. And Mike Bennett, he had Maria's last name. So in WWE, he's called Mike um, Canellas, which is stupid and pretty embarrassing if you ask me. But what can you do? I'm, I'm just happy that they're here. They didn't uh, be joined into a match or anything. They were just saying, hi, we're here. And yeah. But yeah. Uh, back to the matches after Jinder Mahal, Randy Orton. Um, we had a tag team match that was added um, at the last minute just to fill up the show really. Brizango versus the Ascension making their return. Whatever. Brizango got the win, just a whatever tag match. It was there. Um what more do I really need to say if you ask me? <laughs> then we go on to the main event, the Money in the Bank ladder match for a WWE championship match contract. AJ Styles versus Dolph Ziggler versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Baron Corbin. I'm gonna be honest, guys. The first, the first lot of this match, I was really pissed, um, and uh, it made it a little bit hard for me to enjoy it, because when Shinsuke Nakamura was making his entrance, Shinsuke Nakamura was actually my prediction to win this match. By the way, fucking Baron Corbin came in and attacked him during his entrance. That pissed me off, cause just imagine all of the awesome stuff. We could have seen from Nakamura in this match. I mean, Nakamura did uh, come into the match later on near the end. But still, just imagine what could have been, you know. That pissed me off a lot. And uh, kind of hurt my enjoyment of the match. But this was a great match. Match at night. It still could have been so much better, though. Um, you know, it started off all the guys without Nakamura attacking each other and stuff. He had a lot of awesome ladder moves. He had awesome uh, normal wrestling moves from from wrestlers like uh, Sami Zayn doing that big move onto Kevin Owens on the ring apron. That was cool. AJ Styles doing like an attitude adjustment onto Kevin Owens onto a ladder. That was awesome. Dolph Ziggler doing the zigzag onto Baron Corbin off the ladder. That was awesome. And of course, when Nakamura came into the match, that was awesome. And he had Pretty much attacked Brown Corbin for a bit. And we saw a little bit of AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. That was awesome. And I really thought Nakamura was about to win when he came in, back in. But uh, of course, Baron Corbin. He attacked both AJ and Nakamura. Climbed up the ladder. Baron Corbin wins Money in the Bank. He doesn't deserve it. For attacking Nakamura before the match, but he does deserve it for uh, for you know being a hardworking athlete. I mean, to be honest, I'm not a fan of Baron Corbin in the ring at all. I I just don't like him. Um, I really hope he waits a while before he cashes in the contract. Honestly, like um, like at, at least three pay per views after SummerSlam. Seriously. And, sorry, let me rephrase. After three SmackDown pay-per-views. After SummerSlam. Alright. So, yeah. Great match. I still thought it could have been better. But, overall, this was a pretty solid show. 
with a lot of crappy booking decisions. So, yeah. Anyway, um, next WWE pay per view is not until July 9th, and that is Great Balls of Fire. I can't wait for Brock Lesnar vs. Samoa Joe. That's going to be lit, fam. But yeah, that was my review, guys. Uh, take care. Peace out.